Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We got to talk about potential winter weather for this upcoming weekend. And right now it's just potential, not a lot of specifics, but we are seeing a pretty good signal for a pattern for wintry weather in the Carolinas. You're going to see a lot of garbage online with specifics. Don't believe them. Don't believe your apps either. They're going to be complete garbage. We don't know the preciseness. Remember, precision and accuracy aren't the same thing. You could be super precise in the long range and actually be very inaccurate. You want to be broad so that you can nail this as we get closer. So let's talk about it. Yesterday, we were in the 7 to 10 day range right in here. Today, we're clearly in that 5 to 6 day range. I wouldn't say it's trending up or down. It's kind of holding steady. If I was completely honest with you, it did trend a little bit north. But at this time range, those subtle differences are pretty inconsequential. All in all, there's still a pattern there for some wintry weather. Part of the reason this is a good setup for wintry weather is we've got plenty of cold air building over Canada and the northeastern U.S. Unlike cold air, which builds over here, I talked about this yesterday, this in the eastern part of Canada and the Great Lakes and northeast, this is a much better setup for cold air in the Carolinas. We get Arctic outbreak. You see wild posts about polar vortex and all that garbage. And sometimes people don't tell you that cold air doesn't mean it's coming here. It's going somewhere in the northern hemisphere. This is a case where the where the cold air in this case is going into a favorable location for the Carolinas to see cold air. That's eastern Canada and the northeastern U.S. That's where we need to get cold air to get it down into the Carolinas. So let's talk more about this setup. All right, everybody, let's talk about the overall pattern. Don't get into specifics in this model. I'm using it as an example because remember, specifics aren't really there. I'll show you more kind of an overall view, but. Basically, what's going to happen this week? We're going to start later this week, middle of the week. We've got a, a weak cold front. You'll see it here right across the middle of your screen. Uh, this cold front right here will be coming through roughly sometime around Wednesday into Thursday. That is potentially going to be our, our, our blast of Arctic air that tries to move back into the region going into the weekend. So that moves through, and I'm going to go through time. So we'll go through the middle of the week. So this is basically Thursday morning. Um, I'm going to stop it. Let's see. We'll stop this Thursday evening right now um so this is i think this is thursday evening. i gotta look at the time so yeah this no this is friday evening sorry man my dates are all screwed up but what you see here is you got an arctic high pressure system and this is the key to me the arctic high this is a big sprawling area of high pressure so think of this as a surface high it has really cold air it's supplying cold air to the south at the same time we've got some kind of weak front here and maybe low pressure for me the the point here is moisture is going to try to ride up and over into that cold air now if you know anything about arctic air it's typically really shallow here if it's really shallow, that's an ice setup. If it's a little bit thicker, that's more of a snow setup. And that's one of those fine-tuned things you just don't know five, six, seven days out. It's impossible to know because that's a subtle difference. You know, like I said, accuracy and precision aren't the same thing. So as we go into the weekend, you see the sprawling high pressure system to the north and all this overrunning. Now, this might look like a massive storm. This is actually a pretty weak storm because this is just a long extended cold front. I saw someone say this is a really strong storm. It's really not um, because the low is back here. This is just light overrunning. What I think people are, are misconceptions wise are saying is this looks like a, a, a strong storm. It's just a widespread event more than anything. So what's widespread isn't necessarily strong, just means there's more winter weather over a big area. But you can see this initially is showing snow, but I will caution you because of the depth of the cold air, this really does look like an ice or a wintry mix setup. And I'll show you why here in a minute, but that's kind of the setup going into the weekend. And I'll back it up here. You can kind of see, see how flat this is? This is another wild card because when you have a flat system, what I mean by that is see how it's stretched like this instead of like this? The flatness of this means a subtle change. This is why you can't read into anything your apps are telling you. This shifts just 100 miles this way. It's rain and ice and maybe nothing. Shifts 100 miles this way. It's all snow. That's a little difference, honestly, at this time range. So don't get caught up in that. So let's get right to some of the potential. So one of my favorite graphics to show is not how much snow is going to fall, but the probability of snow. So this is the European model's probability of seeing one inch of snow through 2 a.m. or 1 a.m., excuse me, Sunday morning. If you look over the Carolinas, um, roughly around the I-40 corridor north, and you look at the bottom of your screen, you're looking at about a 60% chance I-40 north. You go south, those percentages drop off. If you look at the GFS ensemble, again, this is an ensemble, not deterministic, much higher, up there around 60, 70% down to the state line. So the probabilities 
of snow or probably in that 40 to 50 percent range but that leaves a huge spread for a wintry mix strong signals showing up on our probability outlooks this is what the weather prediction center puts out for saturday into sunday the dark green basically is telling you there's a 30 to 50 percent chance of wintry weather it's a quarter inch equivalent what does that mean two and a half, two and a half inches of snow or two and a half inches of liquid that creates ice or sleet it doesn't always say snow that's the one thing i will tell you this does not mean all snow it means a wintry mess and you can see even on sunday into monday there's a 10 percent chance now on the back side of this this likely would be snow but this initial burst is going to be a wintry mix and let me show you another product that will really explain this even better in all of the hubbub about snow people sometimes miss the point what is the impact on your life light snow normally doesn't have a big impact but if we look at the impacts on roads and infrastructure this is a great product it's the likelihood of moderate impact and if you look carefully right here on the side of your screen what is a moderate impact from winter weather? Expect disruptions to daily life. Hazardous driving conditions, use extra caution while driving. Closures and disruption to infrastructure. That means things will likely shut down, power outages, roads closed, that kind of thing. So this gives you a real good gauge. So this is the chance of those type of impacts happening with a winter event. I'm gonna go through time. We'll go through early Saturday. Um, again, this is through 3 p.m. So notice not much early Saturday, but late Saturday, things start to ramp up. It's really Saturday night into Sunday. This is 3 a.m. Sunday morning. You see the probabilities of impacts increasing. And I'm gonna go all the way through Sunday morning uh, to about right there. So this is through 3 p.m. Sunday. Um, just for reference, the, the, the legends at the bottom, yellow is about a 40% chance of moderate impacts from wintry weather. And I'll go all the way through the period here so you can see, kind of centered more in Eastern North Carolina, mainly because Snow and ice has a much bigger impact there than it does in the Western Carolinas. Doesn't always mean less, just means more of an impact, right? So you see this, this is through 3 p.m. People, everyone, oh, this is snow, snow. Let me show you something very interesting here. I can break this down by snow or ice impacts. Let's go to snow impacts only. Look how the threat for snow impacts shifts up into Virginia, okay? So immediately you go, whoa, that's the, the chance of snow impacts in the Charlotte area dropped to like 10%. It's pretty low. Look at the impacts from ice. Notice how that is to the south. So this is a red flag telling you this is not only snow. This is impacts from ice accumulation, probably more so to the south, snow to the north. Now you combine them, you get the wintry mix, but you get the idea there. That's ice, that's snow. So that should tell you immediately, folks, this is not an all snow event. So we'll keep a close eye on this. There's plenty of time to watch it. It's certainly nothing to ignore, but it's also something you don't get crazy about right now. I would just plan, hey, maybe Sunday or Saturday into Sunday, I might not be going out, so I might wanna grab some extra stuff or just plan around that. Maybe anything you have planned Sunday could get disrupted. Not talking power outages, yes, but yet, but I would say I am a little, concern there's a thing in the back of my mind saying a little bit more of an ice setup possibly with this so just the potential of an ice storm is in the cards it's just small right now but it's something to keep in mind the one thing i will tell you though do not think all snow please do not think that none of our storms here are rarely if ever all snow maybe one out of ten uh, that's ten percent of the time is it all snow ninety percent of the time it's a wintry mix at some point so be prepared for that more than anything